more everything, right? How do you know where the shadows go, please and thank you? Uh, part of it's just like having good reference material that you can kind of refer to and being able to apply the reference to what you're drawing. Um, which is actually why 3D, 3D models are really good for illustration right now, where you could actually like take a 3D model, pose it to your whatever pose you want, set the actual like light source in the air wherever you want, might want it to be, and then light a 3D model to create it. So that way, if you can't find the exact like photo reference or take the exact photo reference, you could you could create it yourself and then have an idea. But with that being said, you could also have your pose. And after a while, like if you know where your light source is, you should be able to discern roughly how shadows are going to interact with with the with the body and such too. So, but that that comes a lot of time and practice, and like I'm not necessarily great at that either. So I, I definitely use a lot of reference material too. If you break the body down to geometric shapes, those are going to interact with other elements of those geometric shapes of the torso, the legs, and cast specific shape shadows that kind of contour over the body. Like, you, you start to learn that over time. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> like, your arm is essentially what? Like, two cylinders, right? A cylinder for your forearm, a cylinder for your upper arm. Like, a uh, some sort of circular, like, device or element for the elbow, for the joint. But if I have an arm raised above me, and there's a light source casting directly onto this arm, the cylinder, well, then that's going to create a cylindrical-shaped shadow cast down below it. And how does that cylindrical shaped shadow fall onto like the chest, you know? Which is effectively like a sphere, if you, if you break it down to, or even like a boxy shape, if you break it down to geometric forms. So right now, like I know my light source is kind of hitting above, so if my hand is outreached like this, right? You can already see it like in my, in my camera, right? To a degree. But there's a lot of shadow on the underside and there's a lot of light hitting the top side of my hand, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna utilize that and think about that and realize that most of like this hand below is gonna be in shadow. So I'll start with that. And then I'm gonna work probably like a, a light source around the perimeter of each finger. And where there might be like gaps, where like light's actually kind of like creeping through and hitting it. And then we'll just kind of like find shapes and kind of create the light after that. Like the shadow on this finger, for example, it's not like a really rigid like cylinder. But it's gonna follow the contour of the knuckle and stuff too, so you gotta like find like some of these shapes. And then maybe you emphasize things like the fingertips, so you leave like more of like a, a light around the, the direct edge to it or something, right? And then you kind of pull the shadow in below the knuckle joint, but then you kind of pull a highlight around that edge above it. that. I'll pull out so you can... <laughs> I'll pull out. <laughs> Chat, never pull out. But yeah, you can basically kind of like create some of these shapes. Um, and because like you know where like where the, where the crease is and like the palm of the hand is and such. Like you'll probably have a shadow directly below the, the, the crease line because like that's where the crease is and the crease is creating a shadow. But then maybe you have a bit of a highlight above that crease so you kind of pull back that shadow right there, right? And then you can... Once you kind of like navigate that and have your, your shadows kind of figured out, then you start going back in and when you start painting it, you can kind of further emphasize that. Like how, how much of this is in shadow or how much is, is it a shadow adjacent to like a hard light hitting it? Or is there a nice variance in between, like a nice gradient, gradient or like a, a transition of value between it? I learned a lot, but know nothing. You know a lot. Can we appreciate how on point my finger work is? <laughs> My brain's broken. I can't absorb any of this, but I appreciate the explanation deeply. 